Hello all, welcome to the Lunar Sea Spire Steven Universe Fan Podcast. This is episode 263, and today we'll be talking about the Summer Camp Island episode, First Day. I'm GC13. And I'm David. So this is the first time we'll finally be getting to talk about Summer Camp Island. I'm happy to. I've seen all 40 episodes that are out so far. I really like the series. It's very, it's so charming and nice. When it first came out, I immediately went to watch the first episode and really enjoyed it. And then I just completely lost track of it because I am a sucker for uh, deepest lore. And obviously, you know, in very sophisticated shows like Steven Universe, they just start you off right on the bat in the first episode with just letting you know that the world's going to be lore heavy. And But yet when I watch Summer Camp Island again, episode one already has me way more intrigued about its uh, world than apparently the first time I watched it more than a year ago. So um, yeah, I had a really delightful experience with it the second time around. I, I will say this, though, for anyone concerned about deepest lore, I would say that Summer Camp Island is more in the adventure time vein of world building, where they're just gonna, hey, hey this sounds cool, let's go ahead and toss this on here. And uh, with the way the Summer Camp Island is set up, it, it really works for that. I appreciate that, too, because <laughs> Adventure Time, you know, compared to like Steven Universe, which basically ramped up its its plot within the first half of its first season. People might forget, but Adventure Time basically didn't do anything for almost like two and a half seasons. So to just kind of be in that realm of a little bit of environmental storytelling or a little bit of just pieces put places or rules for the world like set in episodes but then otherwise just letting the characters have fun I, I think is a nice direction but in this first episode it's really about setting I think the the mood for what the show's going to be and we really just see our two main characters who I both really love in this but it especially focuses on Oscar and sort yeah. of his anxiety which I related to a ton yeah, I'm just I'm just watching this episode again and I'm cognizant of how much effort they are focusing on characterizing Oscar. Like this is Oscar, you're going to you're going to get to know him, but this is this is what he's about. Yeah, and it feels like, you know, we're obviously setting up a certain point for Oscar to hopefully see him grow and, and flourish on Summer Camp Island. But uh, really, here, Oscar even gets basically all the attention over Hedgehog. But that's okay, because Oscar's really interesting. And I think more than even just revealing about, like, Oscar's feelings about leaving home and, and being in, an, in a very new and weird place, it reveals a lot, too, about how characters are going to react to that in the show. And I think that's sort of a thing that shows since, like, since Steven Universe have been working on, like, how do we show kids a good way to interact and understand each other uh, in this sort of, like, new world of, like, actually learning to care about each other's feelings <laughs> and uh, process them in healthy ways. So I think that's something pretty unique that this show sets up from its first episode. Yeah, I, I love Summer Camp Island because it just feels so safe. It's basically a judgment-free zone all around everyone's like oh yeah hello i'm gonna be supportive to you right now and like it's like they never thought that they would be anything else yeah i mean the just the intro is ultra relaxing it's <laughs> it's music and uh, lyrics and then immediately just the designs of all the characters are very comfortable it looks like they're wearing very comfortable clothing i wish i had such a cozy sweater on you know when i when i'm watching it you like the alien sounds in the <laughs> in the theme song i, I want the word theremin comes to mind i love the all, all the not just the sounds but also the sort of all the eclectic like voice work that happens in this first episode just from all the different monsters or other characters that are on the yeah. island the other animals the moon the sun <laughs> howard ava they're ultra unique but they avoid being like potentially too zany or too grating you know like they're not they don't hurt my ears and instead they're just like really fun but in a way that doesn't break from this sort of comforting atmosphere yeah, I love the when the son says, Susie, this speech gets scarier every year. <laughs> Susie's introduction here is awesome. Obviously, from the theme song, I know that the witches are going to be developed a lot more. But uh, just the way that she immediately changes to being more of a sassy teenager as soon as the parents are out of sight was hilarious to me. 
Yeah. I I just think it's really interesting that Susie goes through a whole transformation thing, and then the other two witches, Alice and Betsy, don't gesture at all. They just poof into their outfits. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's in the in the theme song too. Like you can see the clear uh, <laughs> the clear character differences between her. Oh and her friends. yes, I love Alice. You know, amusing Betsy with her magic, and then Susie's just like, "Give me them chips." <laughs> Yes, that is, they, they even characterize the witches well with the theme song. So then, focusing in on what Oscar experiences in this episode. So, basically, <laughs> as his uh, mom tells Susie, he has sort of transitional anxiety. And then as the not-dangerous shark later explicitly tells Oscar in a pool, Oscar was going to experience sort of these types of feelings no matter how crazy the camp was going to be whether it was a yeah. normal camp or a camp full of magic and monsters he latched on to the weirdness as what he was reacting to but as that shark who you will later find out is a licensed therapist quickly <laughs> pointed out the oscar oscar's just an anxious person and this new stuff just it doesn't matter how weird it is it, the, the fact that it's new is enough yeah, and they just capture that so well. Like, I love Oscar's line when he's saying that he does better in groups of two or less. Yes, that was, that was gorgeous. <laughs> like, I just, I think a lot of people are probably able to connect with Oscar. Maybe uh, there's like varying levels of social anxiety they might feel, but just like that not totally ready for spontaneity and not ready for lots of new things that you don't know how you're going to interact with them because you just don't know the rules or just people who are way more <laughs> outgoing than you. Like, I love that the kid just, yeah. one kid climbs through a window and starts telling Hedgehog, like, man, I love, you know, outgoing people like you who just bring everybody together. And meanwhile, Oscar's just like already thinking of how am I going to get out of this? Yeah, I was, I was going to point out how Max, Mr. Extrovert himself, comes in and you know, calls them outgoing kids. Well, you know, the the whole point was to have nobody else there. And then Hedgehog is doing that Charlie Brown looking dance. They all came in through the sliding door. <laughs> Man, yeah, just the party too was a great excuse to, in this first episode, even though they don't have the space to focus on a bunch of characters, they can still put them all in the house so we can just see yeah. a ton of different designs. I mean, even besides just the animal designs, also just other places in the episode, the monsters and stuff are really cool. I love the weird, like, gas cloud underneath Hedgehog's mm -hmm. bed yes, and stuff. the monster under the bed, yes. <laughs> but even, you know, I also, I, I really like the faces that they have that are, that are sort of almost Adventure Time-esque in their simplisticness. And even, like, Oscar's pajamas that transform mm -hmm. sort of have that same simplistic face. But anyway, it's a good excuse for this party to feel very hectic with so many different designed characters. And so I feel Oscar in just, like, bumping into people as, you know, he can't even escape because there's just too many people. I do think that's a good point that... I mean, they, they have all the character models, might as well use them. And it, it does just introducing us to so many people at once. Like, it's so many people, we're not even being introduced to them. We're just being shown them. They're here. Right. And I think this episode is, like, really fast in what it does, too. Like, which I think is really interesting for a kid's cartoon. Because you could, like, really meander on this stuff. But they just, like, immediately drop off Oscar at camp. And then, like, there's just a ton of characters and I, I think they actually are capturing that, like, overwhelming feeling in just the speed of the episode. Not that the episode pacing feels off, but just that maybe your expectations feel off for, like, just how fast everything happens. <laughs> did they did they get you with Oscar being unbuckled from his seatbelt at the very beginning there? <laughs> um, somehow the way that his parents were so calm about it, I was like, well, either there's something really weird about their world that I don't know yet, or apparently they're on a boat their car's on a boat i mean i i know i was it wasn't until he got out and i'm like oh okay because i'm just sitting here thinking okay how come he's not buckled up i mean it <laughs> characterizes him pretty well like that you know he's you know he's got his anxiety but he's still looser he's a more I mean, he is kind of outgoing in his own way just not socially and meanwhile hedgehogs the literally buckled up character you know kind of out from under her father's thumb <laughs> And so, but she's she's still buckling up because that's what he would want her to do, even though there's no real point. 
just makes it harder for her to get to safety in the case of uh, the boat capsizing. So it's literally making her less safe to do that. <laughs> well, I think just every scene in in kids' cartoons runs through standards and practice when it involves a car. So, like, someone usually has to be buckled in, and if they're not buckled in, you have to come up with some excuse. I really like that in the last one out of Beach City in Steven Universe, the way that they dealt with, with seat buckles. This is why we wear seat belts. <laughs> and so... New pearl. No so, so here, the fact that they're on a boat works out for, a, you know, checking that box. I mean, because your your first instinct would be to have Oscar be the one buckled up. You know, he's he's the one who needs to feel safe. But I, I think it characterizes Hedgehog better to have her be the one wearing her seatbelt. Yeah, I think it captures that right, too. But also, I really like that this island is in the middle of who knows where. Why did they pack their cars on this boat and yet the cars didn't get left on the island? Like, shouldn't they just have been riding a boat? It seems yeah. like a weird setup. <laughs> that, is a, that is a very good question that I have not thought of. Why would you do it like that? <laughs> Why did the parents drive their kids on the car and then they park their car on a boat, but then they just let their kids off the boat and then they presumably have their cars taken back to the mainland? But it seems like there was no point in having the car there in the first place. <sighs> it's okay, though. I'm okay I mean, with it. Maybe, maybe the only boat they have in the area is a ferry that normally doesn't work that route, but it takes people to and from the island because I... <laughs> they do that every so often. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it's a weird, mysterious, magical place. Magic is real there. I uh, I love when they're walking to the cabins and you see the, the unicorn in the in the sky and it looks like it's far away. Nope, nope, it was just very small. <laughs> Playing with the perspective. My favorite visual gag was definitely way more basic, but seeing a banana, a living banana, oh, yes. slip on its own peel is really funny. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that make you think of that one episode of Adventure Time, We Fixed a Truck? Yeah, <laughs> there is definitely the same kind of banana humor going on with the banana guards. <laughs> well, it wasn't the... Banana guard, it was the the dude, Banana Man. That wasn't oh, just his right. name, right? He gets arrested for public nudity because he doesn't have a peel in that nanner. <laughs> uh. And then, it's not fair! It's like, oh, don't worry, it's a very minor offense. No, I'm upset about the truck! <laughs> oh, oh man. That's enough of this Adventure Time podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just thinking so much about Adventure Time a lot these days. I, I really I really like that that one episode though so yeah the the banana was funny I, I I like how Oscar gets the the cactus needles stuck in his nose after playing spin the bottle and landing on the cactus and then you know when Ava gets up in his space just the the needles just uh, yeah th this isn't a problem <laughs> you know that scene kind of made me like do a double take because I was like why would Oscar willingly like go into that kiss? But I think it connects to, to what you were talking about with the fact that Oscar didn't have his seatbelt on, which is <laughs> very subtle, but now I'm connecting these things, which is like Oscar is willing to try. Right. So even though he has this anxiety, like he really is throughout the whole episode pushing himself. And so I think even that, spin the bottle kissing scene sort of reinforces the idea that like like he is going for it he he doesn't just like stop and freeze up when he has to go kiss a cactus he'll do it yeah i mean like i said he's he's socially anxious but that just makes him not want to go against what the group says but you know it's like oh yeah kissing a cactus yeah i'll, I'll try that right i mean he kind of like feels forced to at some point but then of course he does try to escape at the end of the episode which um uh, definitely feels like a thing that they could have done in a later episode, but they yeah. just go ahead and do it right here, which I think is is great. And it, like, acts on that whole, like, the suddenness of all this episode. I mean, the episode's literally titled First Day. So, you know, that just, like, suddenness of everything happening and then it culminating in Oscar trying to leave, I think, is, is the smart move. But also, so I haven't seen the rest of the series, but the weird room that Oscar goes through past the pool had my mind spinning because I was like, what is that? Is that just where the shark dolphin thing lives or what? That's his office. Yeah. So I guess we already have that as like a hint. So I, I appreciated that the, that the summer camp Island crew was 
giving actually, you that hint. I'm, I'm just thinking, I don't think we actually see that until the second batch of 20 episodes. So either the second season or the second half of the first season, depending on who you ask. They're playing the long game then. That's impressive. Yep. Again, they, they, they know a lot of stuff. They have a lot of stuff figured out. They just don't have time to show it all, I guess. But yeah, I like the moon. I like the sun. <laughs> You take the moon and you take the sun. The, the moon it's is such a, a great character. Yes. All in all, though, I think the first day was a, a very solid start to the series. It really sets expectations. I, I do agree with you. Dropping the bomb of trying to leave the summer camp island in the first episode does make everything feel like it's happening really suddenly, which is good. Gets us into Oscar's shoes. But it also makes sense because... It's not that kind of series. It's a it's a series about accepting the weirdness, not about trying to get away from it. So, you know, again, getting that out of the way in the first episode is just thematically consistent. Yeah, I'm excited uh, to be guided through the rest of this show. And it's kind of crazy that it has, uh, you know, two seasons under its belt already. So it's kind of like good to know, because when I had first heard about it, I kind of only knew about it as what I thought was just going to be a mini series. So the fact that it's had the time to like flesh out all of its characters in the world. I'm I'm excited to see that vision. But yeah, according to according to the official Cartoon Network video website, it's it's all one season. So the second half of season two, I guess. Oh, or really? Second half of season one, I mean. So yeah, <laughs> they list episodes. they listed as two seasons on Hulu, but that's just the world of online yeah. streaming these days. I mean, I mean Amazon Amazon thinks that Steven Universe has seven seasons, although places like. I know iTunes has them listed as volumes instead of seasons. I mean, it's all a mess. The fact that the people involved in Steven Universe and OKKO had to tell fans when certain episodes were actually supposed to be ordered <laughs> was always yeah, hilarious that's, to me. That, that's really bad. Heck, there are uh, episodes of Mau Mau appear to be ep aired out of order. There's, uh, there's some stuff we learn about a sword in one episode that in an earlier episode is just, oh yeah, uh, I knew that information, even though <laughs> a couple episodes from now you're going to tell me that, and I'm going to be like, wait, really? So I strongly feel like those are out of order, but... Yeah, that's like getting, you know, accidentally ahead of an area in like a video game and then suddenly hitting the tutorial after you've already, like, done the thing. There was an old SNES game where I encountered some enemies and they were like super strong. And so I used save state scumming to <laughs> level up to the point where I could beat them. And then I'm like, then I realized I get to the end of that area and I find out that I'm not supposed to be there. I, I was supposed to go to another area with much lower level enemies first. Yeah, those are the good moments. And it's weird when they pop up in a cartoon <laughs> where usually the experience is a lot less interactive. But apparently we're just supposed to seek out the creator's Twitter accounts or like look up on fan wikis what the actual episode airing order should have been or what the actual season numbers should be compared to what they are on streaming services. Hey, whatever it takes to get fans engaged, am I right? <laughs> apparently. Anyway, guys, that's been us on the first day. Really good episode. Anyway, until next week, I'm GC13. And I'm David. Don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or like on YouTube. Later, everybody. Our opening and closing music is by James Roach. For more Steven Universe fan-related content, please visit LunarCSpire.com. Thank you for listening. Bam 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 bam